Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, and let's crack on with today's first story. Much love guys. Now, today's first story comes from I'm Too Submissive, who says, I'm too submissive and don't know if it's good or bad. They say, not in the sexual sense, but more in the personality department. I'm not married, but I literally can imagine being the type of woman who'd want to spoil her husband rotten. I wouldn't mind being the submissive wife archetype, who would treat my husband like a king, with back massages, dinner prepared, tying his tie every morning, and making him lunch every day. I'd let him have the last say if possible, so as long as it's out of love, and probably be the wife who'd be at his beck and call if possible. I'd do all these things, even if I loved him more than he loved me. So as long as he isn't physically or emotionally abusive or cheating on me, I can't imagine my minding much more doing whatever he asked. Problem is, a lot of people, including some of my friends, hate that. The fact that I'm the kind of woman that makes it easy for me to be taken advantage of. And I admit, I'm fully aware. They think that because I'm this way, that I believe men are superior to women. They think that because I'm this way, that I believe that men are superior to women, which I don't. I just want to please my future husband. I don't know if that is freakishly traditional or just me. To be honest, I've always been pretty submissive and passive and used to be painfully shy growing up too. And while I have been growing out of my timidity, I am still pretty soft and go through lengths to avoid confrontation, which is a good thing and a bad thing. While I acknowledge that I need to work on that, I still wouldn't mind being nearly subservient to my future husband, so as long as he's the type of person I could absolutely adore. Are my friends right? Am I too submissive for my own good? Would it even be possible to be in a proper relationship with that kind of personality? And in the comments on this one, Bob Marley says you sound like a wonderful woman. You are the kind of woman a man dreams that he could be married to. Your friends have their own opinions on matters, but I feel as though they should not bother you at all. Being submissive in the manner you described is not wrong at all. It sounds really sweet and lovely. You sound like a very lovely woman. You shouldn't change anything at all about yourself. Hope you responded saying thank you. I've heard that from many of my guy friends that I'm ultimate wife material. And while it does make me happy to hear, it makes me ponder if I'm really a willing pushover from what I've been told by my girlfriends. Another user quotes Opie and says, so as long as he isn't physically or emotionally abusive or cheating on me, I can't imagine myself minding much doing whatever he asked. And then says, the fact that you already know you wouldn't stand for this says a lot about you. In a good way, of course. Add, can't be a lazy piece of shit who contributes nothing to the house. If he pulls his own weight in the relationship around the house when and with kids, if you decide to have them, and even does all that for you on occasion, I fail to see what's wrong with wanting this lifestyle. Your friends just sound judgmental and closed-minded, to be honest. Opie says, thank you. I definitely can't imagine being in a relationship where I do absolutely nothing, since that would be an all-take, no-give relationship I'd hate to get into. My friends, I think, are definitely more insistent on careers than relationships and are definitely not as supportive of the kind of relationship I want and have told me I'm a bit more of a 1950s wife, which made me a bit self-conscious. While I definitely want to teach in a couple of years, I'm willing to take the submissive wife role too. Clearly Claire says, you be who you are, there's nothing wrong with that. The only concern I have is the kind of guy that your personality will attract. There are plenty of guys who are more assertive and don't mind making the decisions in a relationship. But there are also a lot of assholes who see women like you as a pushover who they can treat badly without consequences. People who think that the way you are is how women should be, and not just how your particular relationship is. Be wary of guys like that. Opie says thank you. I think that's the main reason why a few of my friends told me I'm too submissive and that there really are some guys who treat anyone like that horribly. I know there are some guys that are more assertive and take charge, which I have no problem with whatsoever. But men that are extremely aggressive and violent frankly scare me. So after that, OP came in with another post and says, so that happened. Well, let me start off with something. So a little over a week ago, I was talking with my friends about relationship dynamics. I told them that I actually view myself in a submissive wife role and would have no problem with it. I go on a huge spiel about it in my r slash confessions post, which we just read. 
I spoke with my girlfriends and a few of my guy friends about it mainly, and one of them went to tell either one of some of my other guy friends about it. So come April Fool's Day. One of my guy friends, let's call him B, who I suspect is either somewhat bipolar, has ADD and ADHD, or something that makes him rather impulsive, calls me over to meet with him that evening after work. My first thought is, he's going to do an April Fool's joke. I'm thinking I'm ready to see what he has in store since he did a funny one in college. Literally having some of his friends chase me in funny costumes all around the dorm's lot. So anyway, he turns around and kneels onto one knee, pulls out a case and proposes. Now keep in mind, we're only friends. I've never dated him or considered it because I can't see each other as anything beyond good friends. Also knowing him, he'd be the type of guy who'd pull off this kind of thing as a joke. So thinking this another April Fool's joke, I laugh and tell him, nice try, because I truly think it's an April Fool's joke. He raises the case more, and I keep giggling, asking if he's serious a couple of times before he just says, yep, April Fool's. We both laugh and told him that he couldn't get me that easily since I knew what day it was, and we see each other off. Later on, I find out from a friend that he's been in a funk since and was mopey. At first, I thought something had happened until a friend of mine came to talk to me or I could say hi to him in the morning. Apparently, he was legitimately proposing to me and he was down that I thought it was a prank. Apparently, somewhere in that conversation my friend had had with him, he thought I'd accept his proposal. I'm baffled and trying to wrap my head around it. Until now, I never knew he had feelings for me whatsoever. I mean, he never asked me out or anything like that and I never had feelings for him like that either. I only see him as a friend and don't like him in that way. I honestly don't know how to go about all this. The fact that he liked me in that way. His proposal was real and that I honestly thought he was joking. He jokes around and pulls pranks so much. I never expected anything like this. How do I proceed from here? This just made things extremely awkward and I have no idea what to do when I see him again. Edit. Wow, I didn't expect this magnitude of responses. I haven't responded to all of them, but I'm reading each and every last one and taking them into consideration. Thank you all for taking the time to give me such wonderful advice. Just want to say that to you guys. So in a moment, OP's going to add some more information about this guy because I was really curious because that is just mad. You haven't dated, you haven't done anything like that, and he just proposes to you just like that expected a yes trying to think that kind of thought process how we'd think that op would just go oh yes let's get married is wild little stray says to op saying my alarm bells are going off you're in your early 20s and he's 30 that's a sizable experience and maturity gap that he'd propose without having dated you is frankly crazy that he'd wrap up any sort of relationship step in a joke suggests he's immature like really it's the my friend stole my phone over romantic overtures, but he's a grown man. What's your mutual friend think about this? Opie says my mutual friend actually told me that at first they thought he was joking too until they learned from him that he was being serious. She told me that it was weird and that none she or I saw it coming. Apparently he only told her his plans and that she was weirded out by it and he has always been a weird guy but still caught her off guard. I plan to talk to her more about it tomorrow. He's always acted younger than he truly is and truth be told he's immature and impulsive in many ways it just never occurred to me that he'd do something like this in all seriousness i don't think he knows that i know it wasn't a joke now i'm getting nice guy vibes at the moment op adds more info and says thank you for the advice we've known each other for three years aside from hugs high fives and the friendly playful poke and stuff i do with all my friends i never thought it was out of the ordinary at times, we would have deep conversations, but never anything too deeply romantic, let alone anything implying any romantic feelings for each other, which I don't have for him. As far as I've witnessed, he's usually just as playful with his other friends as he is with me, which is why I truly never saw something like this coming. I saw no change in his behavior whatsoever. The last thing I was talking to him about for all this was if he wanted to watch The Walking Dead with us. I think the relationship conversation one of my friends had with him definitely got misconstrued in the mix in some way. To be frank, I definitely need to ask her exactly how she told him and what happened during that conversation. I think he does have some mental health problems, mainly a low-level bipolar disorder 
that has been diagnosed since he tends to be moody before completely back to his energetic, playful self. I never thought the conversation would spiral in that way. I never expected it for it to happen. I'm still wrapping my head around that and I'm beginning to reflect back on any way he's shown remote interest in me. I never meant to make him feel bad. I don't love him in that way, but he is my friend. Had I known he was serious, I probably would have handled it better. I mean, he's the type of guy with an over-the-top sense of humor, so I truly thought he was joking. I mean, it was April Fool's and he has done crazy things in the past, just nothing like this. I try to talk to him when I get the chance. I really want to salvage our friendship. Despite everything, he's a funny and nice guy whom I'm glad to have as a friend. I just never liked him in that way at all, and he never inferred he liked me in that way before now. I really hope we can still be friends, but if we can't, I can understand taking some distance between us. What a mess. So OP comes in with another update and links the previous post and says, I actually wound up not getting the chance to talk to my friend after all about what he said because he sought me out before I got the chance to talk to him yesterday. As it turned out, several of you were right. He said he was half joking, half serious with a proposal. He had liked me for a long time and they purposely chose him for April Fool's Day to see if I had any romantic interest in him as he did in me. I truly don't understand why that would be a good case to see if I liked him in that way because to propose to anyone out of the blue without dating them usually means an automatic no. He actually was upset by my reaction, more than he thought he would. And right after telling me this, he asked me out. I turned him down as politely as I could though since I don't like him that way at all. He said he thought that I had feelings for him. I told him I loved him as a friend and I could hope we could remain good friends still. But he stormed by me afterwards. Judging from that reaction, I don't think our relationship will be repaired anytime soon, if ever. I guess it's for the best in the end. Thank you all for your wonderful advice you gave me. Things didn't really go as I expected them to, but at least I have much more clarity on the situation. Opie added a comment below that one and says, yeah, something tells me it'll make an interesting April Fool's story in the future. I plan to definitely distance myself from him and definitely be more careful. It actually started all off on just a conversation with my friends on relationships. Didn't expect for it to spiral into this. I guess that teaches me to put it all out there, lol. Definitely going to wait a while before I bring something like that up again. Z says, wow, this might be the absolute most awkward and unlikely to fail way to ask a friend out I've ever heard of. That's so much more awkward than just straightforwardly asking you out. Like, did he really think you'd say yes? I'm baffled by the whole thing, but it sounds like you handled it as well as you possibly could have. OP responded, thanks. This whole thing is crazy and even thinking about it baffles me. I honestly don't know what was going through his head at the time and I guess now I never will. Granted with what everyone pointed out and with a bit more hindsight, I realized that maybe it was never a real friendship in the first place. Walk in the Dead reply saying he was hoping you'd say yes and be his perfect submissive fantasy wife. Girl, make no mistake at what sprung all this of your previous declaration. He wants an exclusive particular fetish. Yes, that in any way shifts the blame onto you. Opie says, with what's happened, I guess really shouldn't have talked aloud about that with my friends, given all that's happened. Going to definitely keep things like that under wraps. I'm still sat here thinking about the thought process of proposing to someone who's shown you no romantic interest whatsoever, you've never dated, and you think that they might say yes. And then when it all does blow up in your face and and you approach her to talk about it, you ask her out again, and when she denies you again, you have a little huff and then storm out of the place. I mean, yeah. Hope he's best off at that situation. I can only feel like there's something more going on with that guy, but <sighs> what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and let's move on to another story. Now, our next story is a neighbors-based story. That's why I got pretty excited about it. It's... There's a warning on it that says it's inconclusive, but it's a neighbor story. I gotta get involved, I'm sorry. It's from Weird Question 11 who says, my neighbors didn't like the color of my house was, so they had it painted a different color while I was out of town. So this is probably a really weird question for me to ask, but it's a weird situation and I'm not really sure what I can do. My house is on a corner lot. Two years ago, a newlywed couple moved into the one house that's besides mine. 
Right away, they started making weird comments about the color my house was painted, yellow, and soon switched to outright demanding that I paint it a different color. My house was painted yellow when it was built. I like the color and there is no bylaw against it or anything. They have called the police on me about it as well as the city, both of whom told them to pound sand because I hadn't done anything wrong and there was nothing they could do. They also tried suing me in court. The suit was thrown out and they had to pay my legal fees and getting our neighbors together to form a homeowners association in the hopes eventually I could be forced to paint my house a different color. Our other neighbors also told them to pound sand and they have basically alienated themselves from everyone else in the neighborhood at this point. I recently had to go out of town for something. I was gone for two weeks. When I got back two days ago, my house was gray. Seriously, I actually almost drove past it because I'm so used to my yellow house. I knew immediately who was responsible, but when I went over and knocked on their door, no one answered. I think the couple figured out that I was away and not just at work when they saw our neighbors collecting my mail for me. Because I sure as hell never told them I was going away. And I know my other neighbors hate them too and didn't tell them. The neighbor from across the street came over and showed me the pictures that he took of the painting company setting up and doing the work. He said he and another neighbor called the police but the painting company had a valid work order and had been paid so the police couldn't do anything. He also told about it but because they were paid to do the work, they said they had to do it to avoid being sued. I called the painting company to get a copy of the work order, and it was in the name of a Mrs. Jane Smith, and was paid for in cash. A red-headed woman and a red-headed husband came to the company to hire them. My neighbors are both redheads, saying they would be out of town and would like the house painted while they were gone. They gave the painting company pictures of my house taken from the street. I had a surveillance camera at my front and side doors and in my backyard because I worked shifts. And as a woman living alone, I don't want some stranger breaking into my house and waiting to ambush me when I get home. My neighbors never set foot on my property at any time, so they can't be charged with trespassing. And they didn't do the painting, which was actually done properly. When I called the police, they reiterated that since the painters were hired, had a valid work order and were paid to do the job, they can't be charged with trespassing because it was reasonable for them to not know and they were acting in good faith and didn't cause any physical damage to the house. Also, the neighbors can't be charged with trespassing or vandalism because they didn't come on my property or touch the house themselves. I don't know if I can sue anyone because there was no actual damage or harm done to me or the house. My neighbors still have not answered their door or shown themselves. I'm pissed off beyond belief. I like my house yellow and I can't believe how fucking crazy they have been. I wish I could show a court or city council how, how psycho they have been over this. I want to know if I have any recourse or if I can do something to get them to pay to paint the house back to yellow. Does anyone know what I can do to get them to fix this and paint it back? Edit, I live in the state of Louisiana. So the top comments on this one said, Call your homeowner's insurance, file a vandalism claim. Insurance company pays you, paint your home back yellow. Give insurance company all the information, let them sue them. This is why you have insurance. Kells says they defaced your property. That is vandalism. Depending on how much it costs to fix, it may be a felony. You also have damages. The cost of painting your house back to the color you like. The principle applies to someone who paints a beautiful mural on a drab gray wall. There's still vandalism, even though in many respects it is an improvement. And someone said on how much the new paint job would cost, OP says they, the neighbors, paid $4,000 in cash according to the painting company. And that was my first thoughts on this. Is like, obviously I'm no legal expert. I don't know. But surely that's, like the commenter said, vandalism, that they're touching your property without your permission. Regardless of how it was done, they still done this. I can't believe they paid $4,000 for this. How can the color of someone else's house wind you up that much? That is wild. Opie came in the next day with an update and says I was going to wait until after the weekend to talk to the lawyer I used for the last lawsuit against me. But there have been further developments, so I had to call him this morning. Beyond the fact that they have filed another lawsuit against me for the cost of the painters. Oh, what? Yes, seriously. I can't say anything further about what has all happened on the advice of my lawyer. I'll provide an update once everything is resolved. Thank you to everyone who responded to my last post. You really know how to make a girl feel special. Commenters say, well, I suppose that makes proving culpability pretty easy. The painters are no longer needed to pin the neighbors. 
And Uncharted Island says, seriously, didn't they just completely incriminate themselves? If so, that's actually awesome news for OP. And the last commenter says they did. And what's even better is they're too stupid to realize they've incriminated themselves. And that was where it ended. Oh, my word. I can only, like, dream of karma that's coming to them. That they have incriminated themselves and going to get themselves in a whole lot of trouble. But what kind of trouble are they going to get in? Is it just going to be financial here? Or is it, is it anything further? Neighbor stories, man. They always get to me. Like, that whole time I was reading it, I was picturing myself across the street just peeking out the window. <laughs> Oh, what a nosy bastard you are, Mark. A lot of comments joking around on this one afterwards saying, you know, when they leave town or whatever, you should get their house painted yellow. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you have your own neighbor's story, don't forget over on r slash Mark Narrations. Don't forget to share your little neighbor drama there. I'm hoping to be doing a, a neighbor's video again soon because I really do enjoy those. But what do you guys make of today's video? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for being here today, getting involved in the stories, your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.